it's official that we're having a Horizon Hub uh, opening up in Asia, and this is the topic of this this panel. So I would like for um, to just like welcome our moderator, Lou Kerner. Uh, where are you, Lou? All right, just please come to stage. Um, also, Lucy Wang is going to be joining us. Guan Jin as well, and John Hung Hung to the stage. So please give them a very well welcome. Thank you. Okay, all right. So you know, when you know, we started Crypto Mondays and decentralized it, I mean, we really decentralized. So everybody runs their own one. They can do whatever they want because our view was that you know, every city is different and the people there know more about their city and, and how to optimize it for, for their city. And so that's kind of what this is about. This is you know, how do we optimize Horizon for the different geographic communities that are out there. And so, you know, even how do you, from a top down kind of, how do you geographically kind of parse out the world? This topic really, um, Guan and Zhang Hu are the experts of their regional market. Um, so this is uh, where the value of uh, uh, community uh, kind of shines, that where we rely really on our community, our regional community, to inform us what is the most effective strategy for their market. You know, what type of support? So then, like, you know, for me, I know the, uh, the kind of support that we need to give to empower them, to enable them to do the work. They know the best way to reach the uh, potential users in their market. Uh, and then also, you know, what is the most effective way to communicate with them? Uh, and then what type of products that need the most? Because user behaviors are different, right? And then community cha uh, communication channels are different. Right, and then cultures are different. All of that, uh, you know, really heavily rely on our community members and also uh, different regional leads. Uh, and for me, really top down is just like you know what kind of resource and support to provide to better enable them. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so now, so why don't you talk about the lessons now that you know you've learned? You know, how long have you been doing it? And lessons learned. Uh, okay, lessons I've learned from Horizon is that you know, first of Horizon is a uh, Great project. So I first get to know Horizon is about 2017, and you know, this is I've been under Horizon is that you know a, a project should have a consistent R and D development and transparency. Uh, those things are uh, some of the tracking records. So I really learned a lot of things, you know, in Horizon, and uh, I I love to uh, help with building Horizon a child like community, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, evangelizing Horizon to to China community is a very meaningful thing because Horizon is a very serious project with a lot of uh, expertise, rough, rough, and uh, a lot of departments. Uh, oh, just learned a lot, and uh, I grew up with Horizon. Yeah. And so, what's what's the main way that you are engaging with the community? Engage our community. Yeah. I think the community from Koreans are uh, have a different job for their own uh, their own company, but uh, they suggest a lot of uh, a lot of decision or a lot of road for Horizon, such as like uh, how about the uh, how about how about the bit with regulation of the Korean or regulation of the China? So I think this is really a great debate from the inside of the community because it, uh, it maybe it, uh, it can be reached to Horizon team and it can be reached by other smart guys answering about that and that will be fun and that will be great. Yeah, I mean, the Korean market is growing rapidly. Um, I mean, can you talk about, you know, and there was just some big event, I can't, I don't remember what it was, but a lot of the community was there recently. Yeah, actually, Korea has a regulation about two years ago, but uh, uh, for example, uh, a major city, which is a Busan city in Korea, uh, they uh, built their own exchange by operate by uh, their own city, uh, and the, one of the biggest projects, Solana, uh, have uh, made the fund 
about a hundred million dollars for the Korean startup company uh, in only in blockchain field. So I think the regulation of the blockchain is still ongoing, but uh, it is better little by little. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's a great com uh, a commitment to, to, you know, to Korea by Solana. You know, how do you position kind of Horizon against that? Because, yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, money, maybe money is a bigger, the Solana has a big money, but uh, they, I, uh, it's kind of personal, uh, personal, personally, I think Solana has a lot of bond and they already contact a lot of uh, startup in Korea but I think uh, the even though Solana has a growing community and their kind of uh, startup alliance but uh, Horizon community members are already about 3,000 and they're uh, some some community members suggest about suggested about me. How about my company uh, make side chain with Horizon? <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, better than better than before because uh, this is the first announce to say that uh, I will build uh, Horizon Korea as a real company with Horizon Labs and Horizon and. Uh, we reach out the several startups in directory, and I already contact. I uh, I own IT company in Korea, I, and my company changed its name with uh, the laboratory to Horizon Korea, and we can reach uh, directory. And for example, uh, I don't know you know the Squid Games or Parasite, uh, the Korean. Uh, Dejong Film Award is the longest and largest film award in Korea. Uh, personally, I want a real use case for the blockchain industry, uh, and this is the first time, uh, first time real use case about the with NFT and voting system, and I am the organizing alliance at that film award and we already built uh, their NFT and their voting system and it can it will be made by Horizon Korea. Yeah, cool. Bringing a lot of value to the ecosystem. That's cool. You know, one of the things when um, he was talking about Horizon Academy, um, he started with his talking about, you know, the metrics that they're being measured by. You know, what, what are the metrics that, that, that you guys are thinking about when you're trying to optimize the community? Sorry, I, I'm not that good at English. <laughs> I can understand. Can you speak one more time? Well, you know, so you know, how, you know, what are the things that you're measuring to to see how you're doing in terms of building the community? Okay, build the community. Uh, actually, we have a community in Kakao Talk, and Kakao Talk can uh, we can uh, analyze the data. Kakao being the the biggest mobile phone company in Korea. Yeah, biggest co company in Korea and Kakaotok is their messaging applications such as like Weixin or uh, WhatsApp and uh, we can analyze the data uh, provided by Kakaotok and uh, for example we have a messaging per uh, maybe 300 per day and their members are still increasing but uh, depend on market situation when market situation goes uh, bear market and there are community members uh, decrease but uh, market situation is a bull market there are a lot of community members and uh, even uh, quit community members are rejoining the community and yeah, say hi yeah yeah, I just want to uh, chime in here. Maybe um, I think uh, really Guan is the best person to tell us more about uh, uh, the kind of metrics they can use in China. Uh, I, also, same really like you know Korea and everywhere else is the our uh, growth of our node network. Um, and then uh, I think you know Guan also has uh, some information on like how many node operators that we have. 
uh, in China, uh, in the Chinese market, uh, and also in Korea market as well. Uh, and then you can tell that uh, regardless uh, how the, the market moves, uh, if it, whether it's a bull market or bear market, it doesn't really uh, kind of uh, uh, impact our node network in a negative way. So that really tells the commitment that we have from different regions and you know, users and people who are really contributing to the network. Maybe Guan can share some insights. Yeah, I, I quite uh, agree with, with Lucy. You know, we have four index that shows the uh, community activity in China. The first one will be uh, WeChat's followers. We have, uh, at the peak, we have almost, you know, uh, uh, 50,000, uh, 5,000 5, followers uh, before the Taliban, but after the Taliban, our main community will be mixing and uh, WeChat, and the third index will be the, the node number. Even though we have been through a bear market, we still have a strong, you know, net, node network supporting. The, uh, the fourth will be, you know, we have some Chinese OGs, Ch Chinese medias, the media I mentioned, OG's mentioned, will be more powerful than both of this, and we can uh, we can uh, dis distinguish the community atmosphere through, through those uh, how, how to say the the, the moment the momentum uh, when the mo momentum is on us, a lot of you, you know uh, uh, a lot of users will speak a lot of valuable words, you know, interesting words, and the LGs are, are shining for them. Or some other. But the bear market, even though we are, you know, it's very plain, but we still have a steady uh, low little growth. That means we have still have a long-term investors, long-term holders. You know, um, since uh, I, I actually, you know, I went to uh, Shanghai twice in 2019, and we've really had a incredibly vibrant ecosystem and and obviously the markets of all the miners have you know at this point i think have, have have to a large degree left you know how have things evolved for you you know and 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 where do you think things are going to be going uh you know the 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 china market is still full of you know uh the light of futures since the, the COVID-19, but we, China is a populous country. We have a lot of miners, investors, VCs, and uh, uh, the most important thing, we have a lot of uh, uh, blockchain developers. So even though the, the China, China, China's regulation towards crypto is very strict, but we still have a large number of smart people. They love blockchain in the future. We, we can still you know, uh, get together uh, at a per weekly or per monthly, you know, in small groups, and uh, to 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 do to to do some, something blockchain related, and still still you know still have a promise in the future in China. Okay, well, we're down to um, you know our last couple of minutes. Is there anything you want to leave you know the audience with with regards to kind of your experience in, in running the you know the the Horizon communities in your area? Uh, my experience, you mean. The uh, running the community with Horizon Korea community is uh, actually kind of difficult because they are smart. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I am uh, personally, I am a developer too, so I can. Rec I I have a background with programming. So when they ask how to build a secure node or how to build a super node or, the, or <laughs> Can you explain about the white paper of the Zendu? <laughs> and yeah, some kinds of like that makes me uh, make makes me more learning about the horizon actually because uh, if they ask, I have to answer that. <laughs> yeah, and and it's it's kind of great because uh, we have actually we have a, a twelve committee on our Horizon Korea community. It's a com committee means. Uh, 12 operators are both about the community rules. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of really great thing about the uh, uh, running the community because it's not, uh, this, the decisions are not made by one person. Decisions are make, made by 12 over 12 person. So we, when we have to uh, debate something, and 
make that decision with uh, 12 people. We just bought this uh, subject to our whole community. <laughs> yeah, and they, they actually bought the community's role and we accept that and we had a docs of the community rules actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is nothing's easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Running a, a community in China is not an uh, easy thing too, because you know you, you have to deal with all kinds of people. Some people you, you know are kind, but some people are not that kind. <laughs> uh, and even to to grow the community is not an easy thing, uh, because there are a lot of competitors' projects. They are hosting some meetups, some MAs, and you know. <laughs> It's really not easy for the whole project uh, since 2018 to 2019, you know. But I think the most interesting thing you want to, you know, uh, keep those community members in your in your access is that you should care about your com community members. You you should do a lot of good good community support and uh, solve their problem, you know, immediately. That will do a lot of help. Yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, in China, uh, before, b before last year, th there are a lot of, you know, uh, offline meetups and uh, to, to attend those meetups, to socialize with those OGs will do uh, much more help to, to grow your community, yes. Yeah, well, cool. Well, thank you very much for sharing those thoughts. Let's give them the, the big hand. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.